Yo, yo, welcome back. Today we are looking at Meshtastic. I kind of stayed out of the Meshtastic uh, YouTube realm because personally I felt that it was a little saturated. Something came along that changed my mind and we'll get to that here in a second. But kind of giving my history on Meshtastic is I started out with these, we're gonna get these guys out of the way for now. I started out with these TT Go's from Lily Go. I've been using it for about six years now and I've developed my own personal repeaters that I've uh, given to friends and family and uh, friends and friends. And we have blanketed our town and pretty much I can go anywhere in my hometown here and be able to communicate via Meshtastic if needed. If you don't know what Meshtastic is and you're just kind of new to all this, Meshtastic is an off the grid open source communication uh, protocol that uses LoRa, um, so uh, long range, transmissions on the 915 megahertz band. If you're here in the US, it's 869 in the UK. And then um, I've built my own repeaters as such. This one here has a rack wireless 915, 9 dBi antenna on there. And I've got a solar panel on the front here. And then inside of this little guy, I have another TT Go. Uh, this is a USB-C version right there. 18650s that I can use and run this guy um, for months at a time. I have these, uh, like I said, around town um, and they are in trees, they're on houses, they are just kind of out there in the wild and they look very inconspicuous because if you ever drive around long enough and you kind of just look around at traffic control data centers and towers in the road, this looks like just one of those devices. So you could easily place one of these with permission uh, on a building or on a neighbor's house, have a discreet repeater and nobody would think none the wiser. I started out with the TT Ghost, like I said, and then along came the Rack 4631s with the whiz block. And those kind of started blowing these TT Ghost out of the water because one, you don't need a screen for mesh tacit for the most part um, because you're, uh, device, your mobile device, uh, Android or iOS is going to be your main communication like peripheral. We, th there are some standalone things that we can get to here and here in a second, but for the most part, the majority of people don't want to carry multiple devices with them. They rather just carry one device, right? And they each have a little, uh, I think these are three or six DBI antennas that I got from Amazon. There will be links for all this stuff posted in the description below. Some of it will be affiliated links, um, so just be aware of that. With the TT Ghost, I was getting roughly three to six miles uh, line of sight uh, from say node A to node B with no repeater in the center. These guys came along and I put these antennas on there and my average mileage went from seven to 10 miles is almost the entire uh, valley where I'm at. And that was impressive. But again, you're looking at size and you're having to carry this extra item with you on top of your, you know, Android or your iOS device, right? And it, it, it this wasn't, it's, it's okay. So one of these lives in my truck, one lives at home, and then um, I can, I use this one just up of the window as a repeater. One lives in my truck as another repeater. Um, so as I'm moving around, it's always a repeater of source. You've seen the T deck, I'm sure. Um, there's, this has been a lot of hype in the past few months. This is the LilyGo T deck with the keyboard. They, this was the uh, earlier version uh, with just the screen here. I put a really fat battery in the back. This thing lasts almost four to five days without a charge. It's pretty impressive. I also have this little rubber ducky uh, 915 uh, antenna that I got from AliExpress. And I am currently running the new uh, UI uh, that was released about a month ago now. And I like it a lot. This is a great like, if your phone goes kaput, you know, and you need a handheld system and you can just have this in a go bag or a get home bag and you are able to communicate to a loved one, friend or family type thing and kind of figure out what is going on. Again, great device. You know, I charged this thing two days ago and I'm still at 94%. This whole video kind of goes from what I like about some of these devices and what I don't like. And the majority of the stuff I don't like is the size of it and just how big it is and having to carry something else. Well, along came Seed Studio with the sense cap, the T1000. Uh, I don't know if there's a play on that Terminator or not. Um, who knows, right? But that 
That is a T1000E. This is a uh, Mesh-tastic credit card size little device. It has a mag charger on the back, an accelerometer in there, a GPS in there, and a little piezo, and uh, a little weather station pretty much. And this little guy, I was super impressed with because its range is incredible for what it is. Without any external antennas, I can get six to seven miles just out of that little device. And to me, that is very, very impressive. On top of that, it is IP65 rated. So that is pretty much any uh, heavy rain to hard dust. Uh, this guy will keep ticking away where the T deck is very exposed. You have the keys here and you have a trackball for grit and junk to get into. So uh, not the best option for harsh environments. Um, these guys would be okay if I were to go and put some kind of uh, liquid gasket in there and such, but then again, your USB-C charging point port is still open. They're bulky, right? The, sen the sense cap though, I have been thoroughly impressed with it. I have been using it now for the past two months. The battery lasts anywhere between two to three days which is pretty, pretty good. It is USB A charged on the little uh, mag charger there. I wish that they had a mag charger USB C charge. So uh, C Studio, when you watch this video, please make a cable that goes to this little mag charger here to a USB C. Things just keep getting smaller, which is amazing with this whole thing, right? So not only did Seed Studio send me this guy, they also sent me this little thing right here. Now this is an ESP32 S three C studio, uh, X I A O. These are pretty popular boards right now. And with a little mesh tastic hat that gives me kind of some ideas of what I want to do with this here on the mesh tastic app for iOS, the current nodes that I'm connected to, if we go to the node itself and we tap on that, we can see here that we have the uh, model. So it's a C car tracker T 1000 E. And then we have the voltage up top uh, with the charge capacity, the model number, the user ID, the firmware. Uh, it is a, its role as a client, its uptime, and then the temperature, which is pretty cool because it's driving this little guy right here is a temperature sensor and a light. So power button right here. That's that. We have the pressure and the wind. If we send a message, so we're going to use this guy right here. Gotta focus for you guys, but we're just gonna say yo, 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 yo. And hit enter, and that's gonna send. And then there you see that we have that acknowledged pretty fast, obviously because I'm right next to the unit. So that is a SenseCat C1000E. Uh, pretty straightforward video, um, not a lot to it. I wanna keep it simple and sweet and kind of show the evolution of mesh tasking devices and kind of where we've come from and where we are going. And I think that there is a lot now with technology changing and growing as it is. I think that there's a lot to come from this um, beautiful little platform that is open source and that has a great community behind it, honestly. Um, there are a hundred other videos out there to watch on this and there are channels that are catered to Meshtastic and I would highly recommend going and checking one of those out. My favorite, my favorite channel to watch when it comes to Meshtastic stuff is the comms channel. I have no affiliation or relationship with uh, the guy that runs that channel. His videos are very well put together, very well worded, a lot of knowledge there. So if you get a chance, go check that channel out. I will post a link for that channel in the description below as well. Um, if you have any questions, reach out, hit me up on my Discord um, or just comment down below. So as always, I appreciate your time. C Studio, thank you for sending me this little T1000E. I greatly appreciate it and I will continue to use this and continue to make more and more videos on this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I will see you guys in the next video.